Welcome back to Plants Not Plastic. I'm Nikita and today I'm gonna to show you how to make any kind of hummus you'd like from scratch at home that's delicious, inexpensive, simple, healthy, whole foods, plant-based, low fat and oil free. I did a video almost a year ago, if you can even believe it's been that long, where I made a homemade oil-free hummus from scratch. And in it, I mentioned that it was a perfect base for all other types of hummus. So today, a year later, we're diving into how to do that. As a refresher, here's everything you'll need to make this recipe. I'll also leave everything for the classic hummus, as well as details for all kinds of varieties in the description box below, along with links to the blog posts with printable recipe cards. Some of my favorite varieties of hummus are with roasted vegetables things like roasted beets, eggplant, carrots, or bell pepper. You can also put in raw veggies like spinach or jalapeno, or if you don't have fresh veggies around or want to just stock things in your pantry so that you can throw hummus together in a pinch, you can buy canned or jarred veggies like artichokes, pimentos, peppers, salsa, mushrooms, Anything that you can find in a can or a jar should be able to go great in a hummus. Just make sure that they're not preserved in oil because that would kind of defeat the purpose of an oil-free hummus. Today, I'm gonna walk you through a roasted beet and a roasted red bell pepper hummus because they are two of my favorites. If you haven't seen that classic hummus recipe, definitely go check out that video. I've also got a bunch of other playlists and all types of recipes on my channel. So if you're looking for more inspiration, go check out all my other videos. And let me know in the comments what your favorite type of hummus is. And if you use this recipe, what types of hummus you would make, I would love to know. And I'll probably be adding more hummus recipes to the blog over time as I try out more of them. So make sure you subscribe to my blog to get those recipes right to your inbox. And that's a perfect segue before we get started that if you are not already subscribed or you're new here, um, go ahead and like this video, click the subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications when I put out new videos. I release new content weekly and would love to have you stick around. Starting with the roasted beet hummus, I like to buy my beets whole with the stems on and wash and keep the beet greens. Their texture is a nice middle ground between spinach and kale and they have a nice mildly bitter flavor that I love to throw into my daily salads. You'll preheat your oven to 400 degrees, then wash your beets before poking them all over with a fork. Roast them whole for 30 to 50 minutes, turning them one to two times while they're cooking until a fork can easily pierce them all the way to the center. Remove them from the oven and let them cool completely. Once they've cooled, you should be able to rub the skin off easily with your fingers. If you want your hummus to be completely smooth, rough chop the beets and you can just throw them in with the rest of your ingredients. I prefer to mimic an old Trader Joe's style hummus that was unfortunately discontinued, which made me very sad, but they included little chunks of beet in the hummus, so I keep a quarter of my beets unblended. Finally dice them and then throw them in at the end so that it adds a little bit of texture and then I wash my hands in my cutting board right away so it doesn't look like I've committed some kind of a crime in my kitchen measure out your chickpeas and aquafaba garlic sesame seeds lemon juice cumin and optional salt add the rough chopped beets and blend everything until it is smooth also, as I mentioned in my original uh, hummus recipe, start with the smallest amounts of your ingredients first and then add more as needed until you get the right flavor and texture. For the roasted red bell pepper hummus, you're gonna preheat the oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, wash the bell peppers and then throw them into a baking pan whole and cook them for 30 minutes, turning them every 10 minutes or so until the skin is completely wrinkled and the peppers are charred on the outside. Transfer them to a bowl, cover them and let them cool. When they have cooled down, you are going to be able to peel the skin off really easily. They will have released quite a bit of liquid, which you wanna leave behind. The stem is also gonna pull out super easy and I like to flip my peppers inside out so that I can scrape out all the seeds. Same as with the beets, you can choose to dice some of your bell pepper up and rough chop your other pieces to throw them in with the rest of your hummus, keeping those finely diced pieces for some texture at the end. Since bell peppers do have quite a bit of moisture and you don't wanna make your hummus runny, I would recommend transferring everything to a clean plate after, leaving behind any extra liquid that's released as you've been prepping them, or you could even keep it and use it in place of water when you blend up your hummus. From here, just measure, combine, and blend. Stir in any diced ingredients you've left aside and your hummus is ready to enjoy. Mm. 
This beautiful magenta color for the beet hummus gets me every time. It is just so pretty. And the combination of sweetness from the beets and the classic hummus flavor are well balanced and so tasty together, where the roasted red bell pepper hummus is sweet and roasty in a completely different but delicious way. I honestly think that homemade hummus is better than the store-bought stuff. It tastes better, it's better for you, and it's way easier to gloat about and impress other people with without a lot of effort. These go great with carrots or celery sticks as a snack or as a spread of a rice cakes or in sandwiches. And if you're trying to stick to a whole foods plant-based diet, you now have not just one more recipe to add to your collection, but the skills to make all kinds of hummus in your own kitchen. For how they stack up against an alternative, you can check out the full nutrition labels on the blog that link out to Chronovator. These recipes though are the same as all my others. When comparing them to non-vegan or processed vegan options, without specialty items or animal products, they will cost you less to make. With plant-based ingredients, they'll have more fiber and without oil or butter, you get to eat more of them for the same number of calories. All right, that's all for today, folks. Bye.